Hi. This week, your last week of material, besides week 10, which is going to be um, simple makeup work kind of review material, but this is the last week where you have an assessment tied to your lesson, um, and it's going to be pretty short. So this video is for the notes. You'll see we're doing radical expressions this week. Um, radicals meaning you have that little square root looking thing, but we're not doing just square roots. We'll also be talking about cube roots. We'll be talking about rational exponents where you have a power and a root because it's the, the exponent is a fraction. So we'll be reviewing that as well. And then we'll be solving an equation too and doing one word problem. So in this first problem, it says simplify the cube root of 24 m to the fourth y. So you can do a factor tree. Um, when you're taking square roots, you're looking to pull out groups of two. But in this case, it's a cube root. So you're looking to pull out groups of three instead. So here's what the radical looks like when it's been factored on the inside. 24 is 2 times 12, 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. Or if you're doing this ninja style and looking for a perfect cube in 24, you could have stopped here at 8 times 3, because 8 is a perfect cube. And then m to the fourth is 4m's. If you're doing this ninja style, you would be looking for just a power of three or a factor of three in the exponents and m to the fourth is the same as m cubed in m. And y is just y, whether you're doing this ninja style or not. Um, so looking for groups of three, there are three twos. So when that simplifies, one two comes outside the radical. And then there are three m's and when that simplifies, one m comes outside the radical. And those two things you pulled out, they get multiplied together. So now you have 2m outside the radical. And then you have m, you have 3my left inside. And I'm missing one thing here. I'm missing the index or the root right there. It's a cube root. Um, and if you're doing this ninja style, over here, you would simplify 8 to come out as 2, and the cube root of m cubed comes out as m, and then you'd have the y there, and you get the same answer. So look at number 2. What's up about number 2 that's different from number 1? A couple things, right? The first thing is that there's a fraction, and the second thing is that it's not a cube root, it's a square root, all right? Um, so when you are, you can do square roots of fractions a few different ways. Here's how we're going to do it today and for this particular problem. Um, we are going to look for anything that we can take the square root of already. And when I say anything, I mean you're looking at the fraction in pieces. You're looking at the 16. Then you're looking at the m squared. Then you're looking at the 5. So that's three parts that you're looking at. Two of those parts are perfect squares. Which ones are they? Think about that for a second. The 16, right? When you take the square root of that, it comes out as 4. And what's the square root of the m squared? m. And you can't take the square root of 5, so it's going to stay in there. So the 4 and the m came out. We're going to multiply them. And we still have the square root, but it's not, it looks like just a 5 is left. But remember, the 5's in the bottom. What do you put in the numerator when everything cancels out there? 1, right? So we have 4m square roots of 1 fifth. Now look at this crazy problem and just sort of take it in for a second. We have 9x to the 6th over y to the negative 12 thirds, all raised to the 3 halves power. Um, there are so many different ways you can start this problem. The way I'm going to show you, 
doesn't have to be your way. Um, it's just one. I'm going to begin by simplifying the negative 12 thirds right here. What is 12 over 3? It's 4, right? So I'm going to rewrite that as negative 4. And I'm just going to show you the steps, but if you look at the completed notes that I've attached in the Google Classroom, I write out the explanations on the left, like I do in class, but I'm not going to do that here just to save some time. Or I'm sorry, not time, space. So I'm going to start by rewriting negative 12 thirds as negative 4. And leaving everything else the same. And then, um, what do you remember about negative exponents? You flip them and you make it positive, right? Well, what does it mean to flip y to the negative 4 when it's on the bottom? It means to push it up top and make the exponent positive. So that's what I'm going to do next. So that gives, and that's the only thing I'm going to do next. So I have 9x to the 6 still, y to the positive 4, all of that raised to the 3 halves. Okay, so that's fine. Um, now, what do you remember about having a product of things, meaning I've got stuff inside the parentheses all being multiplied together. It's a product, 9 times x to the 6 times y to the 4th but it's being raised to a power. Remember what did we do there? We distribute, quote unquote. It's not true distributive property, but it, you can think about it like that. We distribute that power to every piece inside the parentheses. So the nine gets it, the X gets it, and the Y gets it. So here's how that looks. So what is the exponent on the nine? It's a 1. So you're going to do 1 times 3 halves. So we have 9 to the 3 halves. Because we're using our exponent property that says a power to the power means you multiply the powers together. So 1 raised to the 3 halves means 1 times 3 halves. And then you go to the x and you look at that next. So 6 to the 3 halves, so I'm here raising it to 3 halves, means you multiply those exponents together. So we've got 6 times 3 halves. 6 is really over 1, and you multiply across the top and bottom. 18 over 2 gives me 9. So that x to the 9. And I'm going to do the same thing for the y base. 4 to the 3 halves. Power to a power means you multiply. So I'm multiplying 4 times 3 over 2. 4 is really over 1 across the top and across the bottom gives me 12 over 2, which is 6. So I have y to the 6. And it really feels like I can't do anything else here, but that would be false. You can not simplify x to the 9 or y to the 6, however. You can simplify this, where the base is a number, 9. So let's talk about 9 to the 3 halves and review what's going on when you have an exponent that's a fraction. There's really two parts going on here. The 3, the numerator is a power. The denominator, the 2, is a root. And when we did this in class, I told you to do the perform the root first and the power last. So we broke it up like this. We'd say, 9 to the 3 halves is be written as this, 9 to the 1 half to the third power. And that 1 half, a fraction exponent, can be written like this. It means it's a square root. So I rewrote the inside as a root with a radical. And what is the square root of 9? Well, it's 3 raised to the third. And what is 3 to the third? It's 3 times itself 3 times, so 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So the final answer to this problem is 27, x to the ninth, y to the sixth. Right? So there's a lot going on there.
I didn't write down any explanations here, but they are written down on your filled in note sheet. So, so check out that and you can see more, more detail. All right, um, what's up with this next problem? How is that different from the other ones? What do you see there? Hopefully you noticed that there's an equal there. That makes this an equation and you solve equations, right? Everything else we just did, we were just simplifying, but now we're solving. And when you have an equation with a radical in it, your first job is to isolate the radical. Okay, so that means you need to get it by itself. So we want to isolate this thing. But right now, on that left-hand side of the equation, it has a minus x. <clears throat> We need to move that minus x over by doing the opposite. So we add x to both sides. And now I have square root 30 minus x equals x. So that's great. Um, we have to undo the square root. So what's the inverse of square root? Square, right? And because this is an equation, we have to square both sides. So. I will raise the left side to the second power and the right side to the second power. So on the left-hand side, the power of 2 cancels out the root of 2, leaving me the radicand or, or what's inside is all that's left. And then on the right, I have x squared. And don't forget on your filled-in notes, I have more detail. I have the explanations for the steps filled out. And now you see that there's an x squared here and an x. And I hope that you remember that when you have this situation, you're going to have to factor because there's a quadratic here. But before you can factor, you need the entire thing equal to 0. So that means I'm going to take the stuff on the left and move it to the right by doing the opposite of everything. So it's a positive 30 here. I'm going to subtract it from both sides. and it's a negative x on the left, I'm going to add it to both sides. So here's what I would have after that step. 0 equals x squared. Dang it. 0 equals x squared plus x minus 30. And here we have to factor. We will use the cross method. For grouping, what multiplies to negative 30 and adds to 1, and that is 6 and negative 5. So I'm going to rewrite the middle term using 6 and negative 5. So I have x squared plus 6x minus 5x plus 1, and I will do my grouping. Zero equals x times x plus. What did I do wrong here? Okay, why I wrote a one right here? I think I was looking at the. I think I was looking at this one, and then I wrote a one there. So that was not going to work. It's supposed to be negative thirty right there. Okay, so x times x plus six minus 5 times x plus 6 gives me x plus 6 times x minus 5. Remember, we break those up into two baby equations. x equals negative 6 and x equals 5. But here's the thing. At this step right here, when we squared both sides, we introduced an extraneous solution, meaning one of these solutions won't work when it gets plugged back in. So you have to plug it into the original equation and check it out. So here's our original equation. Um, I'll do this in green so you can see. I'm going to plug in, um, I'll check five and see if it works. So the original equation I'm going to put 5 in for x. 
that gives me 30 minus 5 here, which is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. And 0 equals 0. That checks. So 5 is good. Now I need to check out negative 6. So I'm going to go over here, where I have some more room. And I'm going to put negative 6 into the original equation. So 30 minus x, which I'm testing out as negative 6. So that's 30 minus negative 6. What does minus negative mean? It means plus plus. And then minus x again, which is negative 6, which makes another plus plus. So now I have square root of 36 plus 6 equals 0. Square root of 36 is 6. And is it true that 6 plus 6 or 12 equals 0? No, right? Not true. So x equals negative 6 is an extraneous solution. So the only answer here is x equals 5. And that gets us to the very last problem. I want you to pause your video and just read that word problem for a second. All right, this problem is so easy, you guys. Um, we have this formula here, here, t equals square root of d over 16. T stands for time, and D is distance. So it says a construction worker drops a nail from a building that is 82 feet high. How long does it take to hit the puddle on the ground? Well, T is what we're looking for, so it's going to stay T because we don't know it. But D is the distance that it is falling. So D equals 82. That's your D. So we just plug it in. The square root of 82 over 16. In your calculator, you want to do 82 over 16 first, and then take the square root of it, and you should get approximately 2.26 seconds, and that's it for that problem. So go try your practice worksheet. Um, I'll make a, a, a video for that, but of course, like the other ones, it'll be a little bit faster, not so much explanation. And then do your extra practice worksheet, check it with your answers, upload it to Google Classroom, and then do your quiz. Mm -hmm.